What is up guys, Team Yugi Fills here with another video. And today, we're gonna be taking a look at a pretty competitive deck profile and that of Virtual World. Now, there is one thing surrounding Virtual World that everybody always gets very, very uptight about. It's the fact that the deck really loses to itself because it does brick. Totally understandable. I get it. You don't wanna to lose to a brick. However, the deck does push out some very intimidating boards. And for that reason, I want to profile this deck today. So before we get into it, if you guys are not subscribed already, make sure you go ahead and smash that subscribe button, turn the notification bell on so you know exactly when I'm posting cool and awesome content just like this. And obviously give the video a thumbs up because you already know that that thumbs up helps me out even more. Now, before we hop into this, I just want to note that uh, at the time of recording, we are at 915 subscribers, which is very, very respectable, honestly. Uh, I really, I really, really appreciate that, and it's fantastic. However, we are not at a thousand subscribers yet, and we only have until the end of the year. That's the deadline. So, you guys have to have 85 friends who you can go ahead and send this over to and say, hey, go subscribe to my man, Team Yugi Phils, because he always gives us awesome content. He gives us cool videos, cool deck profiles, cool in depth looks, and how to play decks. So, if you guys haven't done that already, what are you doing? You got to help a brother out here, all right? But without further ado, let's hop right on in to the deck profile. All righty. So we are going to be starting with the main deck, which means the first thing we're going to be covering is the virtual world names, because what else would we start with than the virtual world names? So to start things off, we do play three copies of Lulu, because Lulu is your searcher of the deck uh, when you special summon it off of its effect. So basically, you target a virtual world and the uh, virtual world card on the field, and you send from your deck to the graveyard a kind of virtual world card that is different from the one you targeted. And then when it's summoned, you get to search for the third type. Um, so basically, if you target a spell and you send a trap, you search a monster. If you target a monster and you send a spell, you search a trap. Uh, so on and so forth. So it, it, it seems confusing. It's not really that confusing. Um, but it's just the way it's worded. It, it can come off as odd to people who are first reading the card. Very, very easy to understand, though, once you really look at it. Uh, and it's a tuner, which is also important to note. The fact that it's a tuner does come up. And the fact that it's a psychic also comes up uh, because of some some lovely um, generosity on the ban list. So <laughs> we're going to go ahead and just play the three Lulu because it is mandatory. Then we have three copies of Lao Lao. Now, Lao Lao is a revival for your virtual world monsters, except for a virtual world monster that it sends from your deck to the graveyard. But that's not really too big of an issue because usually you send Nyan with it and you send the Nyan and then you bring back a level three and then the Nyan triggers itself to summon itself. So it's not really that big of a deal. Lao Lao is just a fantastic card. Um, very, very powerful. And uh, being able to revive cards is important. And obviously, obviously with it being a level six tuner, it does assist in making your Zulkin plays. So keep that in mind. Then we play three copies of Kirin. Um, card is good. It basically dumps a spare copy um, of a virtual world card from your deck to the graveyard, which is good. It's not the best virtual world card, but it is a level six. So that's always a positive. Um, you, you need your, your level sixes in this deck. It's, it's pretty important. Uh, then we have three copies of GG. Um, I think that GG is a lot better than some people give it credit for. Essentially at the end phase, when you use this special summon effect, uh, you get to add a virtual card, virtual world card from your graveyard back to your hand. Uh, so basically you get to add your Lulu back to hand that way you have another searcher on the following turn. Um, very, very good. It's a level three, so you can go into uh, whatever plays you need to with that. But I think that the card is just very underrated for how good it actually is. Um, I, I really, really enjoy the card. Then lastly, we play two copies of Nyan. I don't think you need to play more than two, and I don't think you have to play the other level six. I think it's just not worth playing. Um, it's so not worth playing to the point that I actually don't even know the name of it because <laughs> um, I, I really just don't care about it. The the Nyan is the important one to be playing a couple of. I don't think you need to play three. You can recycle a lot of cards in this deck back, uh, which is obviously very important so i think that playing the two nyan is perfectly acceptable 
Those are all of the uh, virtual world monsters though. We're gonna hop on over to the hand trap portion next. So for the hand traps, we're playing three copies of Imperm, uh, three copies of Ash. Now I'm gonna explain these before we go on to the next hand trap. But the Imperm is very important in the current meta because it dodges uh, your opponent being able to hit you with a triple tactics talent, which is very important because if you infinite impermanence their uh, Mubi to Fafnir, that's a very good hit. If you infinite impermanence their Keras or um, any of their other Tri Brigade cards, really doesn't have to be just Keras, but uh, you hit any of those and they're gonna struggle. So that's that's the reason for the Imperm. And then the Ash, it's a generic card. Um, you, honestly, you gotta love it. Um, like it just, it's good every format. Everyone's like, oh, I wonder if this card's gonna get power crept. Um, it'll never get power crept. It's just a quick negation. So <laughs> you, you really can't say a quick negation is gonna get power crept. That's just not gonna happen. Uh, then the other hand trap that we play is the triple gamma and the one driver. This is pretty much a staple in virtual world. Uh, one of the things you guys are gonna see is that I'm not playing desires. I don't think desires is even worth playing in this deck right now. Uh, depending on your list, obviously, and your budget, uh, that's gonna dictate a whole whole lot about how your list looks but for my personal list um i don't think playing desires is worth it so i opted to play the game and the driver and it's just a, a fantastic package to have going first or second but those are all the monsters we're going to move on to the spell cards now we have three copies of virtual city kowloon this is going to set up any of your virtual world uh spells or traps from your deck which obviously is very important because you want to get that chuche set up as another interruption so keep in mind that the uh the kowloon does have a very large purpose in, in this deck alongside basically any other virtual world monster that's uh something very important to note then we have three copies of Qinglong. This is not only a negation uh, of a card on field, or face-up monster, I should say, but it's also a searcher by banishing it from grave. I apologize for not having supers. I just never picked up supers. Um, but it's it's a fantastic card, being able to negate a card on the field and search a card. Um, like, just having that alone makes this card worth playing at three. Then we have two copies of Emergency Teleport because uh, Konami was kind enough to give us the second one, and I fully expect when January rolls around that we will get the third. It just makes sense to have the third come back because, like, this card really isn't doing anything right now. Um, like, this this card could have gone right to three and nobody would have really thought twice about it. Like, it's, it's perfectly fine at three, uh, even though it's at two right now. But the other utility card that we play is two copies of Foolish Burial Goods. You can dump a Qinglong off this um, or any of your other virtual world spells or traps that you want to dump uh it's just important overall because allowing you to get to a ching long more quickly is actually really really good because there's going to be some instances where you don't have a lot to do in your opening hand but because you have a foolish burial goods you can send a ching long and just um get your searching on and actually play the game so keep that in mind then we have two copies of talents and one copy of call by the grave um this is, in my opinion, pretty standard. You could play a third Talents instead of the Called By, but I figure that the uh, the Called By is actually very, very good. I'm not playing Cross Out in this list. I'm playing Cross Out in some decks, but in this deck, I really don't like it. So I've opted to just stick with the, the Talents and the Called By, and I think it's probably for the better. Then for the traps, we play two copies of Chuche and one copy of Jean Wu. I think this is pretty standard for the most part um i haven't seen a virtual world list in a while uh, i i just haven't really looked at the deck as much but this is how i would personally play it per the meta and i think that two chu chain one john Wu are probably your your best bets um overall because the the genre primarily in my my experience is just the graveyard revival the banishing from grave uh, and then the chu is kind of a mix of both effects the the level booster decrease or the um the pop usually the pop is almost a little more relevant but it's kind of close um but that's basically it for the main deck i'm going to go ahead and hop on over to the extra deck now and showcase uh what kind of extra deck strategy we have going on Alrighty, moving on to our extra deck now we're going to start off with our synchro lineup 
We'll start off with the level nine Synchros, which is one copy of Shen Shen. Now I'm going to pinch the corners of these cards because it seems like I'm getting a weird glare that I wasn't getting with the main deck. Not too sure why, but it's happening. So we have to adjust. Uh, so we are playing the one Shen Shen. You don't need any more than this, but it's kind of like Dark Law, except it can revive itself, which is actually ridiculous. Um, so you, you just have to play it. It's such a good card, really, really powerful and uh, puts in a lot of work on your end boards. There are some decks that literally just can't play through this card at all, which is crazy to me. Then the other level nine synchro that we're playing is the one Vermilion mech. Uh, I don't think that like you really have to play any other level nine synchros. I think that the Vermilion mech and the Shen Shen are more than enough. It basically assists you in what they're their primary function is of popping cards and making sure that your opponent doesn't really get any of their cards to stick in the graveyard. So um, the mech and the, the Shen Shen are the only two level nines that I feel are necessary. Then I do play the Zulkin and the Crystal Wing. Oh, it's not glaring now. Wow, that's different. Um, but I play the Zulkin and the Crystal Wing. This is something that uh, should be pretty commonplace to most people by now. I think that everyone has grown accustomed to seeing this in most virtual world deck lists. Um, literally, you just make a Zulkin fairly easily in here. You set a random card that you'll probably end up using in that turn, and then you get a free Crystal Wing. So like, there's, there's really not much more to add. It's just a really, really good engine. Then the, uh, the level sixes, we have a Coral Dragon. We have a Juju. That one's glaring a little bit, so I apologize. Uh, the Stardust Charge Warrior and the Muddy Mud Dragon. Um, so typically speaking, the Muddy Mud Dragon, the Charge Warrior, and the Coral Dragon are the cards that I go into most. Um, the Juju, I don't summon out very often. If it is, it's just for like last... Uh, last turn pushes or really weird sticky situations so it doesn't come up frequently but when it does it's it's definitely worth it um, but the coral dragon and the charge warrior are fantastic because if you can get both of them out it gets you a zulkin which is just insane um and at the minimum you're getting to draw cards off of them like that's a, a really big bonus and then the muddy mud dragon is there for um a very important card which is our dragoon now some people like to play Kaliga. Um, I'm not opposed to it. There was a point where I was playing both to kind of switch up depending on the match scenario. But currently, I'm just sticking with the Dragoon and not playing the Kaliga. And personally, I, uh, I like it a little bit more. But there's nothing saying you can't change the list around a little bit to your liking. Moving on to the XYZ monsters, though, for the rank threes, I play one copy of Fortune Tune and one copy of Break Sword. Now, the reason that I'm playing one of each of these is primarily due to the fact that uh, the Fortune Tune gets you into your Zeus a whole lot more easily, which is very important. It's also really good in time. And then the Break Sword is really, really powerful because what happens with the Break Sword is that you're just going to either pop cards or you're going to be able to swing through a monster and then make a Zeus um, or both. You, you could very well do both. So that's, uh, that's my reasoning for playing both is a pop, good for time, good for stalling, and making Zeus. Like the, Those reasons alone should be more than worth it. <laughs> um, now the... Rank six portion of things is where things get a little tricky because I do have one thing that um, I feel can be done differently depending on how you want to play the deck. So I'm going to mention it when we get to it. Um, what you guys do with that information is totally up to you. But we have uh, one copy of Fan Fan, one copy of M7, and one copy of Utopia Beyond. So the thing that I want to refer to is the Utopia Beyond specifically, um, or the Fan Fan, depending on your, your personal preference. You can swap either the Fan Fan or the Utopia Beyond for uh, Gaia Force Dragon, because that card, the, the Rank 7 Xyz, I think it's Gaia Force, um, whatever the, the Rank 7 Gaia is, uh, it's really, really powerful because you can stack it on top of one of these, which is crazy. So, like, that alone is very, very important because it gives you a Zeus that can trigger its effect twice, um, which is fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Um, me, personally, I like getting rid of the Fan Fan. Um, the reason that I say that is that the Utopia Beyond, if they Dragoon Negate early in the turn, you can make the Utopia Beyond, and because it doesn't target, their Dragoon's attack is now zero. So, like, that's <laughs> that's actually really good. Like, that comes up. So, if you're going to switch anything out from my personal standpoint, 
I'd say the fan fan for the Gaia, but that is totally up to you guys, whatever you feel comfortable with. Whatever you do, don't take out the M7, though. This card is just too good, so definitely play the M7. And then the last XYZ monster, as we've already mentioned him prior, is our Zeus. I don't think I have to explain why we're playing this card. Um, card's absolutely bonkers, just sending the entire field to the graveyard. Like, that's <laughs> that's really, really good. But that is the entirety of the extra deck. We're going to go ahead and jump on over to our side deck now and uh, see how to properly counter the meta. Alrighty, so it is now time for our side deck. Um... I really like this side deck. I, I, I typically try and stick to a certain pattern, and that's usually what I'm going to see at my locals most of the time. Not saying that it's always going to be like that, but a lot of times I, I do try and um, think of what I'm going to see at my locals, and then I just go from there. But to start things off, we have some more hand traps in that of three Nibiru and three Droll. Um, I thought about playing Lancia instead of Droll, but after thinking about it, we have a lot of Drytron players at my locals, like a in like an abundance of them. It's just kind of ridiculous how many Drytron players there usually are. So I said, you know what, we're gonna need the drolls. Like we're gonna want to stop them from from doing all that pesky uh, searching. So I opted to toss the drolls in, and I think it's fully worth it. The Nibirus are for basically everything in the meta. Oh, um, also with droll, I should bring this up too um, before I really get into the Nibiru. Uh, conversation uh with droll really really good also against dragon link and really good against like your invoked shadal dogmatica matchup um that's very very important to note so keep in mind that droll is absolutely ridiculous like the card is is good against so many decks um so please don't think it's just for drytron there's a lot of decks that it's good against then uh the nibiru as we we're already starting to talk about is good against a lot of the meta good against dragon link decent against drytron depending on what they open um it's good against almost every single rogue deck like if you play against the mirror this just wins you the mirror matchup um not to say the virtual world is is rogue because it's definitely one of the the best decks in format but nibiru is good against uh the mirror it's good against uh some rogue decks which i i think i should mention in that of uh, my personal favorite deck of all time, Burning Abyss. This card's pretty good against Burning Abyss. Um, unless they know you're playing it, and then they just end on a Beatrice, which is four summons, and they don't uh, do the IP combo, which the smart Burning Abyss player will do. Um, then it's good against Prank Kids. It's really good against Sal Mangrate, another one of my personal favorite decks. Uh, good against Madolce. There, there's a bunch of decks that this card is good against, so keep in mind that the Nibiru really doesn't have uh, one particular matchup that it's that it's uh, designed for. It's there for a bunch of matchups. Then the spell cards, we have three copies of Dark Ruler No More. Uh, I feel that this is a better choice in this deck than, than playing Forbidden Droplet. However, that being said, there are some scenarios where Droplet could be good. But personally, I think that Dark Ruler is better because it helps you keep your hand advantage up. And Virtual World doesn't fully rely on the graveyard. Like, for some portions it does, but not all of them. So I personally feel that Dark Ruler is better because it just shuts the board off. And you don't have to worry about your opponent chaining to it, um, which is obviously in your benefit. <laughs> then we have three copies of Lightning Storm and three copies of Evenly Matched because we don't want to lose the back row. This deck does have a very bad back row matchup, so I wanted to do everything I could in my power to insert the cards to properly combat that, and I feel that Evenly and Lightning Storm are probably your best route because, like, they just wipe everything. It's it's just, you, you gotta get rid of the entire field. Additionally, something that I want to note, with the upcoming release of Sword Soul, Lightning Storm is gonna be an insane card because you're gonna get people who just just drop all of their monsters in attack position and you're going to lightning storm them and they're just going to completely fall flat on their face because you just wiped all their monsters and now they have nothing that they can do so the uh the lightning storm fully worth it with the upcoming meta uh it'll also be good against like fluunderies but i don't think the deck's going to be that good anyways personally um then the the three evenly matched is just it's evenly matched get rid of more back row definitely against eldritch like this absolutely destroys Eldritch, so you gotta play the evenlies but that is the entirety of the side deck which basically brings the deck profile to a close this deck in my opinion has a very very large amount of potential in the upcoming formats because of the possible um 
generosity of Konami, maybe giving us the third e-tally, which I think is pretty likely considering uh, how this format went. I, I think that that'll probably happen, and then it'll be a little extra consistency boost uh, into what we already have, uh, which is great. But overall, the deck performs fairly well. Like I said, the only thing that I would criticize about it is the same thing that everybody else criticizes about it. It's the fact that the deck does occasionally lose to itself in that of bricking. But I do see this deck putting up pretty consistent results and performing well at tournaments. So I definitely recommend it if you are looking for a deck that does work very, very well. And a deck, too, that you can play pretty much on a budget. This deck, for the most part, you, you can play fairly cheap and uh, not worry about breaking the bank. Which, like, that's the big thing is that with the release of so many important decks coming up is that you you're gonna either break the bank or you're gonna have to be a budget player like that's that's essentially what's gonna happen so for me i i don't have an interest in any of the new decks coming up i'm gonna stick to the decks that i have and uh probably play a lot of rogue strategies so you guys will see a lot of those decks on the channel because i really don't pick up um huge meta decks anymore i think the best deck that i have right now is dragon link and it's all pretty much reprints and low rarity <laughs> so but that basically concludes the deck profile hope you guys enjoyed it if you did give the video a thumbs up obviously don't forget to uh you know hit the subscribe button as i mentioned at the beginning of the video it's significantly appreciated turn notification bell on so you guys know when i upload more cool and awesome videos like this so you can hear all about what i'm playing uh this week and what i'm testing out and then obviously um you know, the, the last thing is still, once again, a big thank you for you guys getting me as far as I have so far. We still have a long ways to go before we get to uh, some very large goals, but I figure having a thousand subscribers is a good enough start. So like I said, get 85 more people to subscribe to me. Maybe we'll do some super crazy cool 1,000 subscriber special. I paid attention to one of the polls that I posted about um, what you guys want to see next or more of, and the winner of that was my locals. So within the next couple of weeks, I'm going to try and get down to my locals and either film me playing in locals, or I'll just do a tour of the shop, one or, one or the other. Um, not sure which, but stay tuned for that, and uh, you guys will obviously see that when it comes out. But for right now, this is Team Fails signing out.